Stitch a panorama, a 360 degree panorama with PTG Live Pro. Now, first step, you load the program and you click this advanced button. Click it right now so that you get all these features. Next, we're going to go save. We always want to save our panorama right away. So I'm going to find the folder with my panoramas and we'll call it uh, whatever, whatever dot panorama, save. Now we're going to go load images. I can click load or I can just select my images like this and drag and drop them in, whatever you prefer. Now these were shot with uh, these were shot in RAW and already converted to JPEG, which is a good way to do it because then you make sure that your um, you can make sure that your white balance is the same all the way through and you have proper exposure. Alternatively, you can just drag RAW files right in. So, dragged it in, and if say they were all sideways, I could click here and make them all the right way, and I'm going to click Align Images. Note it's automatically detected that it was shot with a 16 millimeter. It's a 5D Mark II, so it's a one times crop. And we just wait. As long as I had enough overlap between all of my images, it should automatically know how to stitch them, automatically do them. There we go. Didn't give me any errors, which meant I did a good job and it uh, should be good. I, if I look close, I can see there's some br broken lines here. Um, so what I do is I can click on control points and see it's automatically detected all these points. It says that eight lines up with eight, six lines up with a six. But what I can do is I can manually go here and I can say that this point lines up with this point. And I think it's the, the ones here that are bold. Those are the ones that need more work, I think. So, or maybe it's the other way around. So I can just click here and here. And basically the more points, the better. Also, you may notice that it's automatically detected some points uh, improperly. Then you can just move them. I could say, take this five and I can move it to like here. And then of course I'd want this five to move to here. There we go. Okay, so once we've set enough control points, now I go to like optimizer, I click optimizer, um, and it says it's, this is bad. So basically I'd go back and I'd want to fiddle around. Uh, and other, tiltful, other helpful tools are mask. Mask is like, let's say you have image one and two, and they're overlapping, but in this picture there's a person coming out the door. I can click on the red uh, paintbrush, and I can say, don't use this part, and use green and say, instead, use this part. And now if there was a person in this photo, but not in this person, it'll use this photo instead. That's what masking's for. Um, I can go here to exposure and I can make the image a little brighter, darker. Uh, and that's basically it. The main thing is you want to select under panorama settings, you want to go to equal rectangular. Uh, it should automatically do this. If it doesn't, you just manually tell it to. And as long as there's enough overlap, it'll do, it will create this image. Equal rectangular means it's 360 degrees by 180. And finally, we go to create panorama. We go maximum size. Now, 16,000 pixels might be too big for, uh, for online, so you can make it smaller. I, I usually just export the highest quality, and then I'll open it up in uh, Photoshop after and resize it to whatever I need. And then I click Save and create panorama, and now I have my image.